I have a question. So that when, when you're um, upgrading, <coughs> I was... Where are you from? Oh, sorry. Christine Belanger from Canada. Uh, so when you're upgrading, somebody told me you actually have to start from scratch again for putting in all of your... having all your settings the way you want them and... That's because they did not know the magic. They did not know the secret. <laughs> Um, that's that squareview.db file that I was talking about. That's the file that contains all of your settings and all of your changes. So when you do an upgrade, I would suggest, just in an abundance of caution, I would suggest making a copy of squareview.db. Uh, the zip file that you download with all the pieces does not have one of those. And so when you copy the new one over, it doesn't overwrite what you have. But it never hurts to have another copy somewhere else just in case. So that squareview.db file is the one that you want to make sure <laughs> gets preserved across. We have another question, I believe. You. Oh, you just well, He's just holding the microphone. Yeah. Wonderful. <laughs> Good. All right. So on upgrades, it will, you know, you, it, you, you can't keep all of your settings. You do not have to start over. You don't have to lose anything. Uh, you just want to preserve that one disk file. Okay, um, let's see. We'll talk about updating cue sheets, I think, perhaps in just a moment. Bob, at this point, anything you'd like to add on installing, upgrading, et cetera? The, as, as Mary said, the most important thing is, is that you know where it is. <coughs> and and if, you, if you are thinking about moving it from one place to another, you will find that there are things buried inside of the files that you're creating later that are going to tie it to that original space. For example, if you build playlists, they're looking at that folder structure that you're in or where you have them. And so you have to think about this as where do I want to put it and I'm going to leave it there for the rest of my use of Square View to a large extent. Otherwise, you're going to be rebuilding playlists, you're going to be rebuilding choreography lists and things of that nature, which I'm going to talk about later. So, Square View itself over the years has evolved. Uh, Tomas has added option setting after option after option after option. It feels like there are hundreds of different choices of things you can do. Um, most of those hundreds you don't need to care about. You might want to. There are a few of them that you definitely do care about and want to change. Let's take a look at these. And when we get into this, uh, hopefully you can see my little cursor moving around on the screen. Up towards the top on the menu line is a menu option called Options. We click on that and there's a few choices here. Again, this is all written down inside the book that I'll email to you. Uh, the very first one to take a look at is called User Settings. User Settings. And this is probably the simplest option form on the, on the screen. Um, it has a couple of really important things. The, up in this upper right hand corner is a section on how you name, how you prefer to name your music files. And Squareview suggests that you use uh, one of three different choices that suggest that you either use the, the record label a number followed by a space dash space followed by the title. In his example here on the screen, he says um, RR for, for rhythm records, RR space 274, that much is the record name, space dash space bop dot mp3, okay? <laughs> that space dash space is important. <laughs> if you don't get that right, you'll, you'll be struggling forever. Okay, that space dash space is a really key way that Squareview uses to find, figure out the label number and the title of the music. Now, if you wish, you could put things the other way around. You could put it in, um, you put the title first followed by a space dash space and the record label. Personally, I do that. That's the way I store my music because then if I take it off to something like iTunes, which then syncs it to my, my phone or something like that, the phone can do the title first and see everything nicely. Um, but that means that every piece of music I buy, I have to rename. I'm willing to put in that work for me. 
Uh, most callers just want to keep it the way it is, so most callers would use the label dash title. Uh, there are some callers, though, that prefer, let me just skip that whole label thing altogether. I'll just use the title of the song. And so, so uh, Squareview lets you have a third choice here. Just say, just use the title. Don't worry, there's no label number there. I would encourage you probably to use the first option, the label dash title. Um, and, and in a moment, we'll see you, well, behind the... Behind this options window, you can see some of my list of music, and you can see some of the the uh, uh, the different songs with their labels and the and the titles and the like. Okay. Uh, now, another important setting is is the directory, the place in which you store your music. Now, SquareView will default to something like C colon slash SquareView slash MP3. If you choose to put your music in there, that's fine. You don't have to. Um, I choose different, Bob choose, chooses a variation of that. Okay. Uh, another important setting down here is the, the path to the <coughs> lyrics, uh, the cue sheets, and it defaults to C colon square view slash text. Uh, that's an important thing to know. You'll, once you figure out where you want to put your cue sheets, especially the custom ones you write, you'll want to remember that. Yes? So, out of the box, the cue sheets provided with SquareView come into the TX, <coughs> the text folder. If you don't want to have several thousand cue sheets in that folder, then you, in my case, I have a folder called My Lyrics, which contains the ones out of the text that I want to keep, and the, or the ones that I have edited, so that I have my version of that. So SquareView does come with, with a database, a, a, a different dot database file inside the SquareView directory that's got, I believe, 10,622 <coughs> pieces of, the, the, the cue sheets to, to more than 10,000 pieces of music. You can have it look at at that database first, and then at your list of cue sheets, or you can have it look at your list of cue sheets and then the database, or you can tell it just look in one place only. I would recommend doing the directory first and the database second, because then you can put your customized cue sheet in place and have it look for your <coughs> version first if it doesn't find it fall back to, to what it's doing. Uh, Finally, down here at the bottom on the lyric search, you can tell it, uh, do you want to look only for matching the label number? Do you want me to match the title? Do you want me to match the whole file name? And so on. That's usually a default. That, that works pretty good by default. The last option I want to point out here is down here at the very bottom, this create square view shortcut on the desktop. When you put your copy of SquareView on your computer, you may or may not remember where you put it. We suggest you remember. But the, when, you, when you want to start your dance, you want to be able to get at that quickly and easily. And so if you check this little checkbox down here at the very bottom, and then you push the OK button, it's going to create a shortcut for you right there on the desktop. Turn on the computer. There's your SquareView icon. Click it. You're done. Move on suggest you do that. That's a, that's a wise thing to do. Um, another set of options we need to look at, some of the more important ones here. Um, under <laughs> options, music. These are generally options that are going to affect the way that this front page of SquareView works. Uh, the three different list boxes and how it behaves and all the bazillion buttons and gadgets and knobs on here. Uh, the, the, the first option I want to point out is one here called Maximize Window on Start. It's, a, it's the third one down underneath the general buttons. Um, I don't remember if this defaults out of the box to false. I think it defaults to false. I would encourage you to think about setting that to true. That means every time I start Square View, I want it to take up the whole screen. Depends on how good your eyes are and how big your computer monitor is. For most of us, you want as much space for square view as you can get, okay? So I would encourage changing that maximize window on start to be true. 
Down a little bit further is an option. We have to scroll down to find this here. Uh, where is it? There we go. This is down under the music group within, I'm still within options music for those on the tape. Uh, if I scroll down a, a bit below the first page, there is a setting for maximize volume on start. What that would do when that is set to true, that says turn my computer volume up as high as it'll go. Every time I start square root, <clears throat> run the volume all the way up to 100%. I used to do that. Yes, question. Okay. I'll repeat the I'll repeat the question. What are, what are, what are you asking? How do you Mary Moody um, from New Jersey? How do you get that false to true? Ah, thank you, Mary. Mary just asked. Um, as we're looking at this option window, we can see a word false, and how do I change that to the word true? There's you can click on the box. If you double click that a couple times, it will sometimes change the choices. Okay. I'm, doing, I'm tapping twice on mine and it's alternating yes. back and forth. There's also, it's hard to see, but there's on some of these a tiny gray box that shows up next to it that has a drop-down list of choices that you can use. All right, so in this case, if I click that tiny gray box on the far right edge next to the word false on Maximize Music at Start, I get a list I can choose either true or false. So. Uh, I used to maximize the volume on startup every time. I wanted it to it not reduce the volume of the music that I had in my MP3 files. And that worked okay for most of my computers. And what I found though is that more and more, many of the, the newer type of systems that we use uh, will actually produce enough voltage on the, on the cable coming out of the thing when you run at 100% that it will actually overdrive and distort the music. And if you go to a convention, you go to a festival, and the music sounds great for one caller, and the next guy comes up and it sounds really crappy, that second caller probably has maximized volume on start set to true. It overdrives, and it, it starts sounding really fuzzy and muddy and goofy and bad. Don't do that. Don't do that to yourself. We have these wonderful amplifiers that will do the work of making the music louder for you. So I suggest I use a default volume percentage that we see on this setting screen, just a couple lines higher. Mine is set to 70%. Um, your, com your mileage may vary. Your computer may be different. 70% um, though is what I suggest to new callers as I, as I work with them. And that seems to solve the problem with the computer overdriving the amplifier, making the music sound crappy. Yes, another question. Can you resolve that potential overdrive <coughs> the, with the sound card? The, the question is, can you resolve yeah. that potential override with the sound card? Yes, you can, but, but, but more, most of the time, 80% of the time, just change this volume setting and you're good. But we can use other, other types of USB sound ports and things like that. Um, the last little thing I want to look at in options here before we go on has to do with these list boxes that, that are the, the three lists of music down at the bottom. We call those things list boxes. <laughs> That's a really technical term. That's what Microsoft calls the user interface widget gadget. And so only techie people really know what the word list box means. Anyway, we're talking about those three lists of musics across, uh, uh, across the bottom there. Um, the, if we scroll down a little bit further yet, we'll see settings for list box one versus list box two versus three. List box one is the list on the far left side. So they're numbered from left to right, one, two, and three. The, the type setting within each list box is important. You need to know this. You'll want to choose one of these list boxes to play your pattern music, your hotels. You'll want to choose one of these list boxes to generally play your singing calls. And the third list box, do whatever you want with it. Okay? Um, maybe, you, maybe you want to do some special occasion things, maybe you want to do some, some line dances, maybe you want to do whatever. Use it however you wish. But the list box for your hoedown, for your pattern, set that, to set the type to hoedown. 
For those on the tape, we're looking at the options music window. We scrolled quite a ways down onto it to see a section for list box one, and the first line here is called type. We changed that type to hoedown. For a second list box, we changed the type to singing call. Now, if you do that, if you change these types on these list boxes, then Squareview will do certain magic things that you will like. <laughs> if you don't do those, you'll wonder why Squareview isn't doing the magic you see it do for other people. So that's an important piece. Bob. So, a um, couple of things. When you get Squareview out of the box, it comes with a number of list boxes of two. So if you need to have some large type, large print in here, you might stay with two because you're going to have a much bigger font in here and so on. So when you look at some other options, you might be saying, okay, because I'm a caller and I'm going to have patter, hoedowns, and singers, and that's it, I can use only two list boxes and, and I don't need three. If you happen to have the other music category, then you want to have three, but you're going to be limiting the size and readability of the text that you can have in the list boxes you have. Recognize, I jumped ahead and said, and told you you could change the font size, but the point being is, very right out of the box, you're going to look at it and go, there's only two list boxes. Why did, were they talking about that? This is why it comes comes with two, we almost all that I know, of, everybody I do know, makes three. The, that setting is, again, in the options music window. If we scroll down far enough, there's list box general. And inside list box general, there's two settings. One is number of list boxes. You can set that to one, two, or three, depending on what you need. And then just above that is the one for font. Uh, my eyes aren't good enough to read the font that it comes with by default. That's eight-point font, if you wish. Okay. Um, I, I know a lot of people have to get their glasses out and move it, and I know I know one guy that even carries a magnifying glass to read all this stuff. Um, if you wish, you can make the font bigger. You can choose that. Go to Options Music. Scroll down under List Box Generals. Look for the option called Font. And you can set it. I've got mine. You can see on the screen it looks larger. I have it set to a point size of 14. And I've also set the bold styles, those big black ones, big, big bold things to read. Made it much, much easier to read. Again, if you go back from three list boxes to two, you can make the point size even larger. You can make it bold. You can set however you wish. So changing that font on the list boxes is something a lot of people do. Uh, if I could just interrupt. Where's the uh, email list? Is there a pad of paper floating around? You send it back that way? the back of the room. Did it make it around the corner and come back? No. 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 Never made it back this way. Where it, does somebody have a small pad of paper with some names scrolled on it? To okay. my left, the, 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 the rows of three on the side. You guys see it that? It went that over? way. It must be somewhere. Here. Anyway. Yeah, Okay, now, somebody's hiding. Yeah. <laughs> a little notepad. Would you please look for the little notepad, the half page notepad, and, 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 and continue it going if you happen to have it? Huh. Okay, we will find it. We will. <laughs> we will before anybody leaves, we'll make sure it, it, it stays here. Okay, so moving on then. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to mention these these uh, list boxes here. When you go when you go to choose choose what you would like to see, how you would like to organize your music, uh, as an introduction to what Bob's going to say, uh, there is a a button you can click over top of each list box to let you either open a directory containing a bunch of files in it or to open a thing called a playlist. These are really, this is where you want to organize your music, put it in. Bob, could you please talk about how you do your stuff? Absolutely. So, when I look at the basic directory, so you've got the, the C colon square view, which is where, I would say on this computer, it's uh, one place, on my other computer, it's another place, and, and I'm about to, and I'm in the process. 
of reorganizing it. Um, actually, I'm changing from name dash label to label dash name and trying to reorganize my music. Um, the other thing, just to connect a little bit here, when you talk about music preparation and where you store it, and when you talk of, we've had sort of electronic music 101 and 102 sessions here at Color Lab, um, they talk about having a master uh, copy of your music. And I tend to say that that's not in your square view directory. That's someplace else, because that's where you're saving your master copies of your music. Your unaltered, your downloaded, whatever it is that you've done. Um, in square view is where you put the music you use all the time. And so I've put that in, into a folder at the square view level called my music. So what's in my music? Well, my music is mostly contains other folders. Now, in past sessions on Square View, we've talked. People have said, "Well, they put all their music in there, and and then they use playlists to get to organize it." I have other people who segment all of their music into their into the individual units that they have in subfolders within that music folder. So they have their pattern music, they have their singing calls, they have their round dances. Um, I have a combination of those things. I don't have any music at that in the My Music folder directly. No, no MP3s are in there. I have other folders. I have one for pattern music. I actually have one for recordings. Ones that I've taken music that I have recordings of. I have the final copy and I recorded it in and put it in a folder. Um, I have, uh, and in there I also put recordings where I've overlaid vocals on top of them uh, for some of that. I have a patter. Um, actually the folder structure is this handout that, that it's not blue, it just says square view, and it was the one that came in the back. Um, I have the folder structure here, and so for example, the pattern, mp3 files, singing calls, mp3 files, contra dance files, uh, miscellaneous music. I have six birthday songs. And when somebody has a birthday, I say, well, give me a number one to six, and that's the birthday song they get. Um, it, it's, it's fun. By the way, three and four are really good. <laughs> um, I have mixers because I do lots of variety of dances. Um, I have a folder and I will put music into a folder called practice. That's music that I haven't perfected and I'm not ready to perform yet, but I want to be able to move it fairly easily and carry it with me in that. Um, I have round dances. I have solo dances. I have I have one called traditional pattern singing squares. Um, Mitch was asking me what do I mean by traditional. Uh, I mean dance music that I would that sounds like it's from the 1940s and 50s. It's purposeful. It's fill tunes and and uh, other kinds of music that is of that genre. Because I call traditional squares. Every once in a while, it's really fun to you know. You all jump up and you never come down, swing your honey, go round and round. And <laughs> that's right. And there's a few of us that do that. And guess what? It's a nice variety for our dance community. So, um, so music can be organized that way. Now, the important thing here, and I didn't get to later on, there's a on the next page there's a there's what's called playlists. So if I put all of my pattern records in one folder, and some people would say, well, I would have two folders. I would have the ones I use and the ones that I used to use. Some people would organize it that way, and there's nothing wrong with organizing it that way. I tend to have all my pattern in one place because then I can bring up that folder and I can look at it and go, oh, I haven't used that for a while. Or that was a good one that I just heard somebody else use last week and I've, I've owned it for 10 years or something like that. I use playlists to 
select the items that I'm using and you can say I'm going to put all of my pattern that I use in a playlist and there could be a hundred of them or I could say I'm going to build a playlist for Saturday night's dance and I'm going to have ten pattern pieces in it the ones that I'm going to use for that dance I can build um, so organizing this by folder is one way organizing this by playlist is another and we'll show you how that you can get in to do the, do that um, but recognizing that in the basic folder structure of square view we're putting our music and organizing it in a logical way you go out and you buy music and you download it from the music producers and you put it somewhere well you put it in your master music directory you pick the, the key you want out of it if it's been defined as multiple keys you pick the piece of music that you want and you move the music over into square view into the appropriate subdirectory does that make sense to you guys if you guys have enough computer skills that you can do that because one of the things we've encountered in the past is some of those skills are a little foreign to some people um, so if you have that then you can organize your music in a way that makes sense to you and everyone's going to be a little different on this all right we'll talk Yes. Roy Goddard from New Jersey. I don't currently use Square View, so I'm here. It's my understanding that all of these programs, though, uh, the software simply provides a link to wherever the music is on your computer. Is that correct? That so, is correct. So if I have music, if I know where it is on my computer, then can I? basically tell Square View where to find it? So within the playlist structure, that music could be in Timbuktu on your computer. In other words, it could be in any file folder or any directory. I don't recommend that, but yes, within playlists, it can be anywhere you put it. Um, and it doesn't have to be in the Square View directory to put it in a playlist. However, if you start moving things around, you're going to begin losing things. And I've done that. I've had playlists that when you, when you click on it and click on the music, you're going, okay, why is that not coming up? And it's usually because I foolishly moved it somewhere and so on. So anywhere you want to put it, some people, uh, uh, Barry showed the very beginning the directory where that's going to find the music now and it was uh, square view slash mp3 was the default you get to go in and say I want that to be uh, you know ABC directory slash music it's fine to put all your music there there's nothing that says you can't do that and some people do it um, in, in your in your case, Roy, you might want to have say different directories for each, uh, let's say for each rhythm, and then make a playlist that have the different phases uh, for the met the music inside there, or whatever sort of organization you wish. You could use use the directory folders, however they are, and you just uh, uh, rephrase it. We don't put music into Square View. There's no put it in there thing. Square View will go look wherever you tell it on your computer. That's what I want to see. That's what it does. You don't put it in. Um, but with the playlist, then you can construct sort of slices of that music for some given purpose. Whether that's, uh, I want to program this dance, and I know this dance, I'm going to do these things. Whether it's, um, it's a seasonal type of thing, I'd like to have my my St. Patrick's Day music, you know, here's just give me the list of St. Patrick's Day that I use, it's taken from within, or whether it's, um, again, in the case of organizing by rhythm and phase, or, or, or whatever. The important thing is, is there's, at the very beginning in that original options, there was the place <clears throat> where you would provide the route to your music. And within that, there can be any organization of that. If you want to use playlists, it could be other places linked to that playlist. Does that, if that makes sense. Can the 
the same physical, Barry Clasper from Toronto, can the same physical music file be referenced from more than one playlist? Absolutely. No question, easy to do. It can also be copied to more than one folder as, as well. No problem, no problem there. Um, other comments, questions? I mean, we could spend a lot of time talking about organizing music. I see a couple more hands up. Mine is very simple. Will Squareview play on Apple? No. Will Squareview run on an Apple computer? It will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of, sort of. <laughs> you can do some work. Um, Squareview is a Windows program, a Microsoft Windows program, and it needs to it it needs to think that it's running on a Windows computer. So there's a couple ways you can do that on an Apple computer, particularly on a, a Macintosh. Um, three different ways. One, you can set up what they you can set up what they call Boot Camp, where you can actually start running Microsoft Windows on your Apple computer as, instead of booting up into, into Mac OS. A second way you can do it is through what they call virtual machines. There are uh, emulators that make it pretend to be a copy of Windows running within your, your Mac. And then third, there's a, some software, uh, if I remember right, it's called Crossover. I need to get that myself for, for my Mac uh, that actually uh, makes the, the program itself think that it's running on Windows even though there isn't any Windows booted up. But any one of those three options can be used to make it work on a MacBook type of thing. Um, will it work on, on like a, a, an iPad or an iPhone? No, um, it won't. It won't at all. Just one other note, on the beginning of, at the beginning of this handout, it talks about the versions that are available. There's a PC version and there's an Android version available for the mobile or the APK or the tablet. Those are the four versions of software that are currently available from that uh, website download. Bob, I believe we had a question over here. Christine Belanger from Canada. Um, I was just—it's just a comment. So. Uh, for some of the people who are asking some questions. So if you've got your um, folders in your C drive, you should maybe just click on the directory above the boxes to show them where you're getting the different directories from, and then they can see how they're associated from the C drive into Square View. You're talking about this That's, thing? Yes. Or, or, yeah, yeah. Or, or the open. Right. Um, as, we, as we open up our, our list, above each list box are a series of buttons. Uh, the first button on the left allows you to pick and choose a playlist. A playlist, um, we've been using that word here quite a bit, but a playlist is simply nothing more than a disk file that contains a list of other file names. And those other file names would be pieces of music somewhere on your computer, wherever you wish. But it's just, a playlist itself is just a file that contains file names. Nothing more than that. Um, the second button is open up a folder somewhere on my computer or anywhere on my computer and show me what's inside there. That's the, the little file folder guy here. There is a save button that, that you can drag and drop music from one list to another. You can actually you know, click and hold on it and drag it over to a second list and assemble a list of music in one of these windows, like maybe in your third window. And then there's a save button. The third button above each one lets you save that list of music you've constructed in that window as a playlist. Okay. Uh, the fourth button lets you do some search things. We'll look at those in just a little bit. The fifth says, I made a change in my disk directory. Maybe I downloaded more music since I started Square View. Go back and read that playlist over again or read this directory over again because I changed it when you weren't watching. That's what this reset button does here. Um, as you notice, some of my music is marked with green lines. These are, green, these are things that I used in the last week or so uh, as I've been on uh, teaching and calling. And so I can get, the green says you used it, you played it once. You can get rid of that by pressing the red X there. All it does is get rid of the green mark. It doesn't do anything else, okay? And then finally, um, we'll, as we talk about cue sheets and things, there's a, um, there's a yellow button that may or may not have a red slash on it, 
uh, that talks about whether you wanted to actually look for lyrics. So um, to answer, go back to the question that you, you, that you made there, uh, we can use the select folder and go chase down anywhere on our disk where we have that music app and the structure there. Bob, is there more you'd like to add about music files and organization? Actually, I think, I think we've, we've covered most of that. Um, one of the things we talked a little bit about um, in the very first screen of options, there was the lyrics uh, folder. The default that you set up for matching lyric, lyrics and music is defaulted to file name. And if you go in and you select a piece of music with a given name, it will bring up lyrics that have a file of the same name, not the extension, but the same name. That's what it will look for. Unless you have, and this is an advanced capability, unless you have married a different file name to your music file name. And there's a whole set of capabilities associated with that which we may get to. Uh, but you can effectively marry any file, any lyrics file name to any music file name. The default is the same name. If you, if you do that, marry it to a different one, when you upgrade the new program, can, will it copy that over your saved stuff over? Will it copy it over? The, the, the question is, is if you do that marriage of a cue sheet to a piece of music and you upgrade it, will it save that marriage? Will it keep the marriage alive? Yes, that data <laughs> file we talked about, squareview.db. That's the one file that's got the list of marriages in there. You make sure that you get that file copied across. And that'll save all those things. We're going to move on right now. We could spend a lot of time talking about it. I know there's a lot of questions. We do want to hit some other topics, though, as, as time marches on. Uh, when we go to start playing music, this main front window here, there's a lot of buttons and gadgets and doohickeys. Um, up here at the beginning, we've got a start and pause button. We can, I don't have my... I don't have my uh, uh, laptop plugged into the monitor, so we, but as we, as we click on the play versus the pause button, the first one there, it stops and starts. Next one is just a plain stop button. Just stop playing it. I want to move on to something else. We've got go forward, we've got go back a few seconds, go forward a few seconds. Uh, that's not necessarily useful when you're calling a dance, but if you're doing something like a tape group, uh, that's very useful. Uh, there's go forward and play the next song that's queued up in my list. You can set up for your, as you're, as you're doing your dance, you can say to yourself, I'm going to do maybe this pattern followed by this singing call. And you can set that up before you begin calling. You can then, when you finish the pattern, you just push this little guy with two triangles and a line, and it will start the singing call that you put next in line. So you don't have to get out a mouse and scroll up and down and fumble and find the right and, and you know look in you know I've got 500 singing calls I can choose from I don't have to be chasing it down yes question so, Barry I'm Janet from Arizona <coughs> if you use the the double arrow as you just said is it going to be talking about the music that's in the box immediately below it as far as being queued up Yes, the okay. immediately below those buttons, for those yes. on the recording, we're looking in the upper left-hand corner of the Square View music pad. There's kind of a blank white box online, and that that's, is the music that's queued up. But you can you can queue up music by double-clicking on it or by, <laughs> by left-clicking on it down in one so of So Barry, we're going we're gonna to pause here briefly. They're going to change the battery in the video. Ah. Ah. If I knocked on the floor. <laughs> Alright, he's rolling. We're ready to go again. Okay, we got it. Alright, we have located the pad with email addresses that is resuming its journey through the room. The question on the floor is if we have this list of queued up music, how do we get something queued up? You can do a left click. Instead of the normal right click, you can do a left click on that piece of music. It adds it to. So the Barry, screen. you're backwards. Right. Oh shoot! I'm dyslexic again. <laughs> 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 so I'm we're sorry. the tape for the tape. <laughs> yeah, it's putting the cursor on the piece of music. 
and doing a, a right standard click. right click okay. will add it to that window. Yeah. Okay. And, if, and if you happen to be left-handed and you've swapped those in your configuration, then you're then we're going to be backwards of what we're saying on the tape. All right. So yes. Yeah, so I I apologize. You've got you've got one button you click to normally point at something and to select it. Right. It's the other button <laughs> that you use. And come to think, you know, come to think of it, as I'm looking at my computer here, uh, that other button is on my right side. <laughs> but that's yeah. Anyway, so so uh, uh, yeah, you, you you do the other button that will add it to the list of cute songs. Next to the list of cute songs is a red X that will clear out all the list of cute music that's there. You can also drop and drop it. You can also drag and drop, yes indeed. Wow. Okay. Uh, there's several other buttons here. Uh, you've, you've probably, many of you have seen there are buttons here to affect the tempo, the beats per minute of the music. You can grab a little nubbin, nibbins, nub, or nubbins up here and drag that back and forth. We'll talk about the keys on the keyboard in a moment. Uh, there is a pitch button changing the tones up and down by semitones up and down. So you can make the dance, the, the, the music go faster or slower. That would be the tempo. So we have some questions already on that. All right. Okay, so I'm going back, this is Christine again from Canada. I'm going back to the, the list box that you had there right under the... Um, yes, the cute box. music. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I did that in the afternoon, turned off my computer, went to the dance, and it was gone. Oh, yeah, it doesn't right. say. <laughs> so is there anywhere you can keep it there while your computer's off for the next... Make a playlist. You, can, you can do a playlist. That's a good way to do it. That will help. Um, it's, it is intended to be sort of a transitive type of thing. If you're looking to program a dance in advance, no, yes, yeah. I'd recommend a playlist instead of using that cute button. So the playlist is on your C drive? Yes, it is. Oh. It's, a, it's a file, and then you can open it just like another, and then it'll just show up in this list box as in the order that you built it. Okay, it, it, it's, it's not alphabetical or by label, it's in the order you created it. All right, um, so we can tweak the tempo without changing the pitch. We can change the pitch without tweaking the tempo. There is a speed adjustment that would be the equivalent of the revolutions per minute knob on a, on a turntable. Don't touch it. Okay. <laughs> Leave it alone. Okay. Yeah, you can you can make it sound if you want to make it go faster and sound higher. Sure, you could play with that. But by and large, that will only get you in trouble. Don't go there. Uh, Ted Rotwood, Southeast Pennsylvania. Uh, I currently use uh, CDs, and I've been resisting going to a computer because I, I, in the past I've talked to people. I can only do things on my CD. I can't do with the program. I'm trying to find out. In this program, if I want to, in the middle, in the middle of a section, uh, I'm doing a singing call, and I'm, I'm 15 yeah. seconds in, and I see problems, and I want to slow it. I want to slow it down because they. Can I do that? Absolutely. How, Absolutely. How well, one way, one way. This is not the way I would do it, but one way is to grab this tempo button uh, and slow it down. Okay, but. There are keys on the keyboard I'm going to talk about here in just a moment that make that life a whole bunch easier. So let me put your question on hold for Fine. about two minutes. <laughs> yeah. All right, and we're going to come back to that. All right, so we got one one there, and we got one in the back. Mary Moody, New Jersey. Um, my save music settings only works on music that I newly put in and for a while. My stuff that I've had a long time doesn't save it anymore. Have I saved things in too many times that it's given up saving, or is there another setting I should go to? Your question's going to come up after death. Uh, <laughs> or your answer. I don't have a question anymore. <laughs> right. it was just, I was just commenting on what she had asked. All right. Um, and, and the short answer is no, there's no such thing as too many times, but I do want to show you a little bit about where those music settings are at and what you can do with them. Um, uh, well, actually, this is probably an okay time. Under the Tools option, here towards the top, is a thing called the Music Manager, the very first selection. And this is the complete list of all the songs that have any music settings at all. And this list is unbounded. You can have thousands and thousands and thousands of things in this list. There is no limit. 
You can select any one given song here. Um, uh, bring, I, I double clicked on that to sort of bring those settings up here to the top. And it looks like when I last saved this, I slowed the tempo down just a little bit on this Christmas melody. I changed it, slowed the tempo down by a couple ticks. Uh, you can change the looping, the, the starting and ending spots of the loop. We'll talk more about loops. You can set equalizer settings as if you have, were changing the bass and treble. There are three different equalizer settings you can use. Bass, mid-range, and, and treble. You can tweak those. Uh, you can even program in a key change if you want to get towards the end of the, the, you've got a piece of music that does not have a key change in it, but you'd like to take it up by a, by a tone or so, a couple of semitones, you can program in that, that key change, tell it how many semitones you'd like to increase or, or decrease, and at what point, what time inside the, the, the piece of music you'd like that, to take that effect. You can change all of these things, uh, change the pitch as well, um, change all of that in here and set it. Let's see, let me find one that's got here. Okay, here's one, um, a, a piece of music that has a loop setting. <sighs> Looping, I want to go back. I want to close this window here. I'm looking at the main, uh, the main window of the, of the play list. When, remember we talked about setting that the type of music in each of the three list boxes? I said that was important. One of the magic things that Swerview can set for you, if your list box is of type hoedown, then it will automatically check this loop box when you start playing something from there. If it's not automatically checking the loop box, that's because your list box doesn't say hoedown. It isn't of the right type. You need to go into the settings and change that. All right. So. Um, by default, Squareview doesn't know anything about what's, what the music sounds like. And so they guess that, that when you get 15 seconds from the end of the record, from the end of the piece of music, it's going to jump back to 15 seconds from the beginning. So you, you play it almost all the way through, just before the end, it goes back, not to the very beginning, but skipping sort of the first, sec the first section or the, or the introduction, 15 seconds from the beginning. You know, you know, that's better than the turntables with the reset button, when you could hear it pick up the needle, move across, and drop it back down. Okay, that's better than that. But some people want to be even fussier, and that's okay. They want to make that loop sound as seamless as possible. So within this, um, you, can, you can manually set, as you start playing the music, you can manually push these green check boxes next to the start and stop loop time as it's playing. When you get along to the point where you want the start to be or the end to be, you can press the button. Strictly speaking, you can push and hold the button, and when you're getting, when you're right there, you let go because it's the time you let go that it, it makes a note of. But you can do even better than that. We're going back to the tools music music manager box. You can double click on something, you can see the loop start and loop stop times are measured in sections and fractions of a second. On this particular piece of music, my loop uh, ends at the end of the music is at 224.9 seconds into the piece of music, and then it will jump back to 30.7 seconds from the beginning. You can press this play, this green loop button, on this music manager box. Again, the computer's not plugged into the, the microphone, into the amplifier right now, so many of you may not hear this, but I could. It just looped. I don't know if you noticed that, <laughs> mm -hmm. but, but I was able to push that button. I could hear it would start five seconds before the end of the loop, play five seconds, do the loop and then keep on playing. And so I sat at, at my desk and it took me about maybe a minute to tweak those numbers. Okay, let it play a little longer, a little longer before you loop. Okay, right there. Now, once I got the ending part right, I could then listen to the beginning part after the loop and I could fiddle with the number. I would put in 30.5. No, that's not good enough. 30.6. Okay, I'm just getting closer. 30.7. Oh, yes, I like that. 
So you can use in Music Manager, you can fine tune your loops down to a thousandth of a second, depending on how picky you are. Okay, and, and, and yes, we have a question, Chuck. In the previous session, they were talking about uh, you know, the recording and so forth. But and then they were talking about the fact that it's in Square View, you can make some changes, but it doesn't, but if you do it on the fly, it doesn't change the audio file. This will change the audio file, will it not? Thank you. Um, uh, basically, in, it, it, what Chuck is referring to is the session in this room just before now was, was looking at digital music enhancement, where you could take a music editor file and actually modify the piece of music itself. You could change, you could change the sound. Okay? Square View doesn't modify the original sound. It doesn't touch the original thing, but it can warp it on the way through. And so these types of changes that we're putting into here, into this music manager, the pitch change, the tempo change, the key change, the equalizer settings, that's done as it plays the music in real time. These settings are saved with each individual piece of music in that squareview.db file we keep talking about. That's where it writes it down, and it will automatically restore these settings the next time you play that piece of music. A different way you can save those is once you've tweaked it using the main front music panel, there is a save button. Uh, this is just to the left of the top center. There's a little icon here where you can tweak the tempo, you can tweak the pitch you've been using at a dance, you kind of like it, you want, to re you want it to remember that. There's a save button and that will write it down in the database that we can then look at later if we want with the music manager settings. But it does not change it the does audio not, file. It does not change the audio file. It leaves the audio file untouched, original. A um, couple of other quick options. Gosh, time is flying by here. Um, there's a, over to the over on the right side here, next to the clock. We have a we have four different buttons we can push. Actually, six buttons. Um, auto start. I have it depressed. I have a green check mark by it. If I click it again, it pops out, and the green check mark goes away. Auto start means that when I double click on a piece of music in one of my list boxes, it starts playing right away. That's what I like to do. I don't want to, I don't want to select my music and go somewhere else and tell it to play. I just double tap and, it, and off and away it goes. So I like the auto start. The button below that, uh, show the lyrics automatically when a singing call begins to play. Remember those list box types? If you don't set your list box type to singing call, it won't do this. This is the most frequent uh, question I see on Facebook. It is indeed. I can't get my lyrics to come up. <coughs> they didn't push this button. This <laughs> lyrics play button next to the clock. You need that button pushed in that says show me the lyrics when I play the music. <laughs> the yellow button above the list box, the yellow button, um, that looks, if you look very close, it kind of seems to have like what might be words on it. That's the button that says, I want you to turn on lyrics or turn off lyrics for everything in this list. You want the type to be set to singing call. You want this yellow button not to have a red slash through it. And you want to set the turn on music automatically when it plays. Show me the lyrics automatically. You do those three things, you've got a good shot of it working. All right, so uh, we've talked briefly looping, we've talked about that. You can have up here at the top this tracking button. If you'd like Square View to write down every piece of music that you use at a dance, click the tracking button. It'll ask you for the name of the dance, and then every time you start playing a piece of music, it'll write that down. The, oh, the list about who wants copies of the material, uh, the list is back up here at front. If you'd like copies of this, all this stuff, we're now, 10 pages into it out of the 35. Uh, we'll make sure you get your name added to that list. Um, I'll also get it to the to the home office people too, so they can get it out on the CDs, I, I hope. And, yep, we'll get it to Barry on the knowledge base and we'll uh, uh, try to get it on the, on the, yeah, all the, get it out every way we can. Um, if you're doing a tape group, you want to learn about markers. If you're not doing a tape group, we don't have to take the time in this 
session to talk about that. Progress uh, bar. Ah, hot keys. Hot keys. Under the uh, under the options button or menu selection is a thing called hot keys. That will tell you that Square View can has like 60 different functions that you can do and you can see you can associate each one of those with some key on the keyboard if you wish uh, for example there was a question on Ted's question uh, you're working along in a singing call and you think you need to slow it down a little bit you don't want to stop and start over and you don't want to reach up and get the mouse and grab this little nubbins kit the the letter E on the keyboard by default will slow the music down a bit. The letter R, which is right next to it on the keyboard, will speed it back up. How much? If, if you can set, remember all those hundreds of settings? Um, you can choose how much you want it to go up and down. The default is 1%. But it's one fixed thing. No, you can press the key more you, than once. You push the key more than once. So as I'm going, if I want to slow it down, I'll tap that key two or three or four or five times and slow it down to the level that I want. Square View is also showing you the tempo up here at the top, measured in beats per minute. Uh, and then once you've adjusted it, there's the save button. That's the save button right there. That allows, you to, that, that allows you to put it into that music file. And it will remember that setting then the next time. We have a friend... You hear the change. Oh yeah, absolutely. Very much. We have a friend who absolutely resisted going to computers. They did CDs, uh, they did records, they did CDs, they swore up and down they would never ever go to computers. We finally talked him into trying it. And he did the work to go through and set up his pitch changes and his tempo changes on, on pieces of music thereafter. After he did that, he came to us and said, why didn't you make me do this earlier? He said, this is so nice. It remembers every one of my settings. I don't have to move the slider up and down on my Gemini CD with every, every time I change songs. He, the fact that he could write it down once and have it remember that, he loves it. So he, the, the, we have one guy left in our area that still uses records. We haven't talked him into it. We haven't talked Ozzy into it yet. But uh, uh, if you know Don and Doug Sprosty, uh, some of you may know may know Don and Doug. Uh, they are not techno technophiles. <laughs> uh, they were the technophobes, and and Don is now an absolute believer in using computer stuff. Made his life much easier. We've got seven minutes left. Um, oh my gosh, there are questions and comments popping all over here. Um, let me just mention a few more keys there. There are keys to change the pitch. There are keys to change the tempo. Under the options menu, there's a thing called hot keys. We can talk about, uh, there's all kinds of settings. The document I'll send you will do many, many more of those. Uh, quickly, we'll take like two, three questions, and then we want to say a few more words. Yeah, more to, uh, Ken Jordan from Virginia Beach, more to your point of uh, making these adjustments on the fly when you're in the middle of a song and you want to change the pitch, you want to change the tempo. When you hit those keys, don't go crazy. It, yeah. give, so hit it once or twice, let the computer catch up with you. Because what you'll find is, you'll go from something that's going really, really well, that's a little bit too fast, and then all of if you hit it, many times so it's going really slow. So everybody Be understand. very gentle with the E and the R keys and the other Everybody understands the keys. difference between tempo and speed, right? No. Okay, tempo is beats per minute. Yes. And if you change the tempo, it does not change the pitch. If you change the speed, it's like up and down on the slider on, a, on an old turntable, and it's going to raise the pitch as you increase the speed, or lower the pitch as you decrease the speed. When you change the tempo, it is keeping the same key. It is simply making the beats per minute go up or down. Is that it? Does that make sense to everybody? Because that's really, really critical to understand. That's why Barry said, don't change speed. Because it's not about speed. This is about changing pitch. Now, if you change the pitch in the middle of a tune while you're singing it, you're going to be in trouble. It's ugly. So you don't really want to change it in the middle of a show. 
It's one thing to change the tempo. You can change the tempo as you are doing the song and not and not impact your performance. Unless you go crazy with the button. If you change the pitch, you're gonna hear it instantly. And it's one one button unless you change it, one button push is a half a step. <coughs> It's on pitch and on tempo, it's 1%. It's 1%. Yep. Yeah. All right, default. so we got one in the back. Virgil Forbes out of Maryland on the handout. Two very quick questions. The first paragraph says, uh, program runs on XP, Vista, and 7. Shall I assume it also runs on Windows 10 and soon to be 12? Yes. This, yes, you should make that assumption. The second question, uh, top of the next page, it says, uh, the music files for MP3 or WAV, does it take additional formats like the old uh, Windows WMA compressed file? Yes. yes. It takes just about any format. There's actually about seven or eight different formats, including my favorite name of all time, Og Forbis. <laughs> it, the, the one thing it does not do is digital rights management encrypted stuff. Uh, the DRM pieces of music, it does not know how to decrypt those. What do we mean by those? Um, Apple, as you download things from iTunes, will either provide it as an AAC file, which is just a fancy way of spelling MP3, or they will, or sometimes they download it as an MP4 with the digital rights management. Uh, you have to get those exported to a different type. The DRM stuff will not play, but Virtually any other music format that's, that's, that's a not restricted format is, is usable. Uh, Brian Fried from Minnesota. And actually, you and I talked about this on the way down here. I just got a brand new piece of music. Let's just use Blow Away from Sheet, okay? How do I put the cue sheet that they produced, and it's either an HTML or PDF, do I create a file that says, like, we can call it whatever you want to do it, my lyrics or whatever you want, and then you can marry the music to that? So you have a bunch of options here. And, uh, so yes, you get, a, you get a download, and there are five or six files in the download. Uh, the MP3 files, you're going to pick, there's one with vocals and there's one with maybe two or three different keys. You're going to pick one of those that is the one you want to, you think you want to use. Um, and you're going to put that into your music folder wherever you're going to put it. You're going to take the, uh, I use HTML, single file HTML files for most of my stuff, um, rather than PDFs because PDFs don't display as well in my mind, even though I have done, done it. Um, and I will move that into the My Lyrics folder, and I will use the search my the My Lyrics folder before I search database option that we talked about earlier. So moving those those two files, one into the music and one into the My Lyrics, is the way you get it in there. And once it's there, now if the file names are identical, it'll it'll bring it up. If they're not identical. Then you're going to go in and oh, you went a different place. Um, you're going to go in and do the marry option, um, where you can search for the lyrics to go with this under tools. You want you want that one instead of this one, okay? Yep. <laughs> well, uh, under tools, there's there is the marry marry lyrics. So you can pick on the left a music and on the right a lyrics and say put them together. Remember them together. Does that answer the question? Yes, sir, it does. Thank okay, you. Add this, this, this button. Yeah. So if you want to take the, the cue sheet provided by the producers, put it in a place that you like, you can marry it up using this type of option. Uh, you can also create your own cue sheets. Uh, there is a tools cue sheets button here uh, that lets you write your own. And all in all, it's just going to display an HTML file or a PDF or whatever. And so if, you're, if you have skills in picking up an HTML file, go wild. 
do whatever you want with your with your cue sheets and just point to it. So the one other thing I want to show just real quick uh, that we we that has helped a lot of people in the past is is under the uh, view button is something here called music control. If you ever find that you have it's a little tricky to get your mouse or your finger to move to exactly the right spot in the middle of a dance to start playing music. If you wish there were bigger buttons, you can get them to be as big as you wish by doing view music control. Uh, these big friendly buttons will play, start, stop, move on to the next, fade music in and out, and change the tempo up and down, Ted's favorite point. <laughs> So we've got big, big friendly buttons here that you can click on as, as well. This works really well if you're using a, a computer with a touch screen, or when you're using your finger instead of a mouse. So we are out of time. There was a bunch more in, in, in the handout. We did not get to the tabs across the top, um, and to the building of choreography into this, which you can do as well. Um, we want to uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, Mitch had a comment. One last thing. You start the music to get the people on the floor, they're all staying there, you want to start your music over, you got to go down and drink? No, hit period. It'll go right back to the beginning and just start. So some of those other hotkeys, the most important one is the space bar and the period. Those two are the most important keys that you have available to you and and it's all good thank you thank you very much for coming